find the value of a so that the plane 3x minus y plus z is equal to 3 and the line x minus 3 over 3 is equal to y minus 2 over 2 is equal to z minus 5 over a are parallel and find the shortest distance between them. Right, first of all, what we need to do is rewrite both of these in their sort of vector form. So we're going to take the plane and we're going to write it as r dot 3 minus 1, 1. From here, 3 minus 1, 3. And the number 1, 3 that comes from the end. And for the line, we have, uh, it goes through the point 3, when it's in this form, 3, 2, 5 and has a directional vector of 3, 2, A. So the line can be written as the point is a vector of 3, 2, 5, that comes from there, 3, 2, 5, plus some uh, parameter lambda, 3, 2, A. And what we've got to do is find the value of A, such that this line here is parallel to this uh, vector here. So to do that, we're just going to look at the GeoGebra app. So here I have the plane, and here I have the line for the value of a equal to zero. I've got a slider here, so you can move this slider around. This, this app is attached to this video, the link to it. So if we move it around, what we need to do is find such a thing that it is actually uh, parallel to it. Now, one way to do that is if we introduce the normal vector of the plane, which is this one here, at a particular point such that you know the plane and the vector here are right angles to each other we can see if we move this at this particular value we can roughly see that they actually look like they are perpendicular to each other but let's just see uh, so what we need to do is to show that our line and a plane are parallel to each other is that we need to show that the directional vector of the line is perpendicular to the normal of the plane. So just repeat that. The directional vector of the line is perpendicular to the normal vector of the plane. So let's just do that. So there's, there's my drawing that I've just done, so just filling out all the information. Okay, so the directional vector of the line is 3, 2, A. The normal vector is 3, minus 1, 1. Normal directional vector. So for the plane and the line to be parallel, the normal vector of the plane, N, and the directional vector of line V must be perpendicular. The condition for perpendicular vectors is that the scalar product is equal to zero. So we're going to do 3 times 3 plus minus 1 times 2 plus 1 times a is equal to zero. So it's going to give me 9 minus 2 plus a is equal to zero and from that we have to, we can see very easily that a has to be equal to minus seven and if we look back at this you can see here very closely that this is actually minus seven okay and if we look at it if we now look at it because this is what the, the great thing about this is it's difficult to see from here, but we can actually see if we draw it line up that this does actually now look perpendicular. So it's very difficult to see from that angle. So this is one of the advantage of this software. Okay. Well, now what you do is you embed the line into a parallel vector, parallel plane, and we'll call that pi one. So my new plane is going to be r dot 3 minus 1, 1, because uh, uh, it must have the same normal vector as the original plane. We actually know one point on the line, which is 3, 2, 5. We know this point here, or this point A, 3, 2, 5, given from the equation of the line. 
So we've got 3, 2, 5, D, my value of D will be equal to 3, 2, 5, dot, 3, minus 1, 1. Of my new thing, so I need to find this value of D and I know one point in the plane. So it's going to be 3 times 3, plus 2 times minus 1, plus 5 times 1. So it's going to give me 9, minus 2, plus 5, which gives me 12. So my next new plane is going to be the plane that I'm going to bed the line is r dot 3 minus 1, 1 is equal to 12. If I go to this and click the next one, I can click on here first, sorry. And you can now see a new orange plane. And if I move it around, you can see that the line is actually embedded into a new plane. Right, so the final step now is to in order to find the distance, I need to find that distance from B to C. Now in order to do that, I know now I need to find the distance between the two planes. Now to find the distance between the two planes, I need to write them in their unit normal vector form. Because the number at the end gives me the distance, perpendicular distance of the plane to the origin. So I'm going to calculate that one. And I can see this case that the planes are both on the same side as the origin. So I'm going to calculate uh, 0, C, and I'm going to take away this distance here, 0, B. So, just repeat what I'm going to do here. I'm going to calculate 0, C, take away 0, B, and that will give me the distance of 1, which is B, C. Now, find the distance between two plane 1 and plane. We're just going to write these now, these planes in normal vector form. So r dot normal vector is equal to d, where d is the distance of the plane from the origin. So the normal vector will be the vector n divided by its magnitude and the normal vector is 3 minus 1, 1. So I'm going to write that as 3i minus j plus k over the magnitude which is its square root 3 squared plus minus 1 squared plus 1 squared which is going to give me 1 over root 11, 3 minus 1, 1. Therefore, the original plane will be r dot 1 over root 11, 3 minus 1, 1 is equal to 3 divided by root 11. So we divide each thing by root 11 and do the same to this one, divided by root 11. So the line, the plane that the line is embedded in will be r dot 1 over root 11, 3 minus 1, 1 is equal to 12 root 11. Now, because I have the same signs, same sign, this, this gives me their distance away from the origin. But because the signs are the same, they're on the same side of the origin. So I have to do so, so, something slightly different. I have to do that distance minus that distance. So the distance, so both sides are on the same plane. So we're, in this case, we're going to do D is equal to D2 minus D1. So I'm going to do the distance between the line and the plane the line contains the, the plane is 12 over root 11, this is what the question said, minus 3 over root 11, which gives me 9 over root 11, or 9 root 11 over 11. Going back to the GeoGebra applet, if I click the last one, I can see that uh, that gives me 2.71, which is the same as 9 over root 11. Okay, and don't forget you can use this to move it around and look at it from different angles. I'll have a look at the whole thing again.